Hello students, welcome to the next video that is on the two and three wheeler technology in which we are learning about the chapter number two that is on the power plant. Power plant which means the engine for the two and three wheeler technology. In the case of the two and three wheeler technology, we are generally seeing about the petrol engines which are being used in the two and three wheelers. Generally diesel engines are not very famous for using in the two and three wheelers so we will always see about the petrol engines whenever we are talking about the engine of the two and three wheeler vehicles in the previous video we saw about the two stroke and four stroke engine working for the petrol engine and also we saw about the pot timing diagram which shows us the actual angles at which the pots of the two stroke engine opens Next thing that we need to see about the ball timing diagram of the four stroke engine, right? Also previously I said whenever we are talking about the balls, we are talking about the four stroke engine. So in the case of the ball timing diagram, mainly two things is important when the inlet valve opens and closes and when the exhaust valve opens and closes. Also one thing is important is that when the spark occurs in the engine right again in this four stroke as well the spark advance will be necessary right so let's see about the bar timing diagram of the four stroke petrol engine in here you can see about the four stroke petrol engine bar timing diagram from the starting the inlet valve will be opened before 20 degrees of the tdc after opening the inlet valve, the suction stroke will start. Also, the inlet valve closing will be done 35 degrees after the BDC. So, inlet valve is opened for 55 degrees more than theoretical value. After that, compression stroke will be done, which is shown with the purple cup. During the compression stroke, before the 35 degrees of the TDC, the spark will occur which means the ignition will be given. After the ignition, the green curve which shows you the power stroke. During the power stroke, before the 35 degree of the BDC, the exhaust valve will open. After the exhaust valve is closed after 10 degrees of the TDC. So this was the procedure for the valve timing diagram. Again. You can see both the procedures simultaneously in the engine process and the valve timing as well. See it clearly that inlet valve is open before 20 degrees. After suction stroke happens, after completion of the suction stroke, compression happens. After that, expansion happens. And after the expansion process, the last one is the exhaust process. In the case of the exhaust process as well, the 10 degrees and 35, that means 45 degrees exhaust valve is stayed open for the longer time. Now here you can see the angle at 30 degrees. That top you can see 30 degrees. During that period, what happened is the valve overlapping. Valve overlapping, which means that during this time, both the valves is kept open simultaneously, which means inlet valve is also a open and exhaust valve is also open. So in this case, again the scavenging process will be necessary which shows you that the inlet charge has to force out the exhaust charges. If the pressure of the inlet charge is lower, then it will go out with the exhaust charge and the wastage of the fuel will happen in case of that no scavenging process. So during this valve overlapping, the inlet charge will force out the exhaust charges in case of the four-stroke petrol engine. Again, you can see the angles for the inlet stroke or the suction stroke. The angle of the inlet valve is before 20 degrees and after that 35 degrees more it is kept open. So inlet valve is being kept open for more than theoretical crank angle time almost 55 angle more than the theoretical time why we are doing this 
is because the more the charge we can intake in engine the more power the engine can generate right so to get the required charge or to get the required quantity of the charge in the engine the inlet valve is kept open for more than required time same for the exhaust valve it is also kept open for more than theoretical time almost 45 degree crank rotation more than the required time so why this happens is because that exhaust gases should also go out in all the quantities whenever we are running the four stroke engine so to get the exhaust gases an extra time so that it can get exempted from the engine we keep the exhaust valve open for the more time also one more thing that needs to be looked at is the spark advance you can see the spark advance is given before the 35 degrees of the tdc which means when the compression stroke is about to be completed before that the spark will be given in the charge with the help of the spark advance we are giving it a time to start the burning of the fuel plus air after applying the spark there will be some time that is known as the ignition lag for burning to be started in case of the four stroke engine so because of that the spark will be advanced so that the required energy can be obtained at the required time in the case of the expansion stroke if we are giving the spark at an given time of you can say at the tdc then the energy will be getting during the ending of the expansion stroke so what will happen that the energy will be out with the exhaust stroke so we will waste the energy that is being used during the power stroke so because utilizing the energy we are giving the advance to the spark of the spark plug so this was a basic valve timing diagram for the four stroke petrol engine now let see some criteria for the selection of the engine in case of the two stroke and four stroke engine for the two and three wheeler vehicles first thing that needs to be kept in mind is the which type of vehicle we are using for example if we are using an automatic transmission vehicle manual transmission vehicle auto rickshaw two wheeler three wheeler etc etc so that will show us which engine is required for which type of vehicle second thing is the load carrying capacity of the vehicle for example in the case of the two wheelers the load carrying capacity will be lesser compared to the three wheelers right in case of the three wheelers there are more number of passenger that can sit in the vehicle so the load carrying capacity of the three wheeler should be higher than the two wheelers in case of the two wheelers as well for the activas and other automatic transmitter vehicle the load carrying capacity will be lower compared to the motorcycles that we are using right so this will depend on the number of types of the vehicles third thing is the required power output right the power output that is required in the engine how much power needs to be generated in the engine for example the cc's the com cubic centimeters of the engine will be decided based on the power that is required in the vehicle right for example the automatic transmitted vehicles that is generally used for the normal purpose will have comparatively lower powers the bikes that are generally used for the sports motorcycles they will have a higher power demand so after that we will decide the cc of the engine the required maximum speed right the maximum speed that is required for the two and three wheelers will also be used to select the engine for that particular vehicle after that the space availability how much space is available to store the engine right understand this the space to store the engine not the space for the passengers the space to store the engine is also important in the two and three wheeler 
vehicles because we have a limited space available in case of the two and three wheelers and because of that we need to maintain the engine if we are making the engine very large and if we don't have the space to store the engine then it will not be useful also the next thing is the location of the engine when we are locating the engine in the case of the auto rickshaws the engine was located earlier below the seat of the driver now the engine in the case of the cng is located at the rear side of the vehicle so that location will be important to select the engine that is used in the two and three wheelers also the characteristics speed versus the power curve the power from which the utilization of the speed and torque will be done the division of power will be done in the two factors that is torque and speed the speed if it is required more then that curve will be followed the how much power is utilized for the speed purpose also in case of the torque curve for the engine how much power will be used for overcoming any load that is required to be developed by the engine as a torque so we will do the division of the two things that is speed and the torque from the power which is being generated by the engine the bsfc that is brake specific fuel consumption how much the brake specific fuel consumption should be of the vehicle is an important factor for the selection of engine which will decide eventually the average of the vehicle right for the case of the manual transmission vehicle the average will always be higher compared to the automatic transmitted vehicle that works on the cvt and the last thing is the number and diameter of the cylinder of the engine how much number of the cylinders will be used in the engine that will be decided based on the power that needs to be generated by the engine and also the diameter of the cylinder that is a bore diameter of the cylinder the bore diameter has its own limitation because of the problem that can occur in the petrol engine that is a knocking right so knocking will decide the bore diameter of the engine and by all this factor we can decide or select the engine that needs to be used in the vehicle so in the graphical manner you can see the selection criteria that we discussed in a proper manner that how much points that needs to be kept in mind whenever we are selecting the engine for the two and three wheeler vehicle right so these are all the factors that needs to be kept in the mind next thing is the design considerations for the engine what considerations of the design should be taken while designing the components of the engine and which components needs to be kept in the mind so first thing is the design of the piston the piston does a reciprocating motion from the up and down from tdc to bdc and from bdc to tdc for that the design of the piston needs to be done the second thing is the piston rings will be designed the piston rings supports the piston it gives the proper movement to the piston as well it also gives the lubrication sealing or it gives the proper flow to the lubrication whenever there is a reciprocating motion of the piston with cylinder so to avoid the friction between the piston and the cylinder the lubrication is important and because of that the piston rings gives us the proper lubrication so which piston ring needs to be used and the diameter and 100% total design of the piston ring will be done also the gadget pin the gadget pin is used to connect between piston and the connecting rod this pin needs to be kept properly so that the proper movement should be transferred from the piston and connecting rod next thing is the connecting rod itself which transmits the motion of the piston to the crankshaft so generally the design of the connecting rod will be done the section of the connecting rod will be selected generally the i section is used for the connecting rod next thing is the crankshaft 
Now the crankshaft is important because the crankshaft transmits the move, most of the engine power to the flywheel and flywheel further transmits our engine power to the transmission system. So crankshaft is the main component that transmits the power of the engine. After that the valves needs to be designed how much diameter should be kept of the valve how much air and charge should be intake in the engine through the valves. Cylinder head will be designed how much space should be given in the cylinder head so that the quantity of the fuel and air can be taken inside the engine. Cylinder block will be designed in that the components of the valves, the cap shaft, the rocker arms will be kept in the cylinder block. And the last thing is the design of the camshaft and the rocker arms. Camshaft and rocker arms is important because after designing them, the valve timing will be designed. So according to the valve timing, the camshaft needs to be designed because our valves is being operated with the help of camshaft. And that camshaft is connected to the crankshaft of the engine. The detailed design of all this component will come in the further semesters. So whenever we are taking the considerations for the engine design, these are the main components that needs to be kept in mind while designing the engine. So in this video we saw about the bar timing diagram, also we saw about the selection criteria and design considerations for the engine. From the next video, we will see about the fuel supply systems that is used in the case of the two and three wheeler vehicles. Until then, thank you so much.